Greetings one and all, it is I, Transformers Fan Co. 328, and there's something I'd like to mention. My plans for Revenge of the Fall and the Real Revenge. Yeah, Real Revenge is, I guess you could say cancelled, but at the same time it's being reworked. What I mean by that is that I'm more into Transformers Prime than I am the live action movies, I gotta admit. Especially since my collection has grown since I started planning Real Revenge. So I've decided to scrap the idea of Real Revenge and rework it into a parody of the Icon Relic Hunts of the Transformers Prime show, because though I love the show, it is flawed. To me, a great series is a series that you can totally make fun of, but it's still a quality series and can be enjoyed on its own. And that's what we're going to be doing. This is not going to be Revenge of the Fallen, the real revenge, though we are going to be featuring the Fallen, though not in the way you'd expect. Basically, we're going to be changing real revenge into something called Hunt for the Relics. And yes, it is a play on the Hunt for the Decepticons toy line. I still don't get how that provided the perfect Voyager Prime and they still had to make another Voyager Prime for the whole mech tech thing. Why can't they just add more mech tech ports onto the Hunt for the Decepticons Voyager? I don't know. What I'm going to be reading off to you is what was going to be Revenge of the Fallen, the Real Revenge, when the only element of crossover was the Makuta and Spider-Man. Part 1. The Meeting of Dark Forces Immediately after the events of the prelude, the Makuta meets the Fallen. After a brief conversation explaining to the Fallen why he's there, the Fallen proceeds to attack Makuta to test his strength. The Fallen gets flung to a wall and realizes that being offered an alliance with someone of that power is an opportunity worth accepting. The Fallen then offers Makuta the leadership position he forgot to give to another Decepticon and asks him to use the army to keep the Autobots hostage while he executes his real revenge plot. Makuta agrees and gathers all the Decepticon forces, except for Megatron and Soundwave, who are tasked with the communication priorities of the Decepticons and heads off after asking Megatron where the Autobots are located. The Autobots, and Spider-Man, are gathered in a meeting led by Optimus Prime and Wheeljack to talk about the new subdivisions of the Autobots called Stars, Hammer, and Hot Nuts, mainly a way for Optimus to get rid of the Autobots he doesn't particularly like and to get in on RC, which abruptly ends with Nemesis Shockwave attacking the Autobots. Optimus meets the Makuta face to face, where Makuta tells Optimus to go through the Force to face the Fallen to a fair one-on-one -on -one battle that will determine the outcome of the war. Initially skeptical, Prime agrees to go there and allows his other Autobots to fight off the Decepticon army, which they fail at doing due to being overwhelmed. With the Autobots captured, Makuta tells the Decepticons that he was impressed with the display, but decides to leave them unintended for a brief moment to attend to matters personal to him. Part 2. The Death of Hope Makuta returns to the Fallen, saying that Optimus agreed to the challenge, where the Fallen talks about how he's pleased with the results of Makuta has brought him in his first few moments of his leadership, and departs for the battle with Optimus. Makuta, meanwhile, picks up the still-sleeping body of his brother, talking about how he cares for his brother's future, but knows that even sleep won't help his situation, so he decides the only way to truly protect his brother is to absorb the power of his brother, believing it to keep his brother's essence alive through him. But he can't really say any of this because Megatron and Soundwave are having a conversation that is very loud and keeps interrupting his attempts to speak, which is when he just snaps and kills his brother, absorbing what kept his brother alive in the first place. After realizing this, the Makuta accepts that now he'll be better prepared for the final battle ahead and returns to the Autobot capture site. Meanwhile, the Fallen and Optimus meet in the forest where they are pleased to find fair one-on-one -on -one battling conditions. They duke it out, with Optimus being too overconfident for his own good, remembering the last time they fought. The Fallen, taking advantage of this, ends up winning, preparing to rip the Matrix of Leadership from Optimus' dying spark chamber, only to find a copy of The Matrix, the special edition, with commentary by Sentinel Prime, which he crushes, claiming it to be worth the slag. He then finds the real Matrix of Leadership and proceeds to take it, noticing its G1-ish appearance, but making nothing of it. After using his staff to smash the already slowly dying spark chamber, the Fallen flees back to base. Part 3. The Transcendence of History The Fallen returns to the base and instructs Megatron and Soundwave to hack communications all over the world so he can inform humanity about their final hours of existence. Megatron asks why it's necessary to do so, with the Fallen simply wanting to see humanity's order crumble over their eventual demise. 
The Fallen does so, while the Autobots were able to gain an advantage over their Decepticon captors, having already killed Stalker Scorpnock, but having lost some of their weaponry in the process. All the while, Prime Wheeljack shows up to help, but ends up in a duel with Dead End, Black Shadow, and giving some assistance to the Bulkhead, who's fighting off Lugnut. As the Combaticons enter, the rap ensues, with the Creon Microchanger Superion getting kicked out, only for it to be an imagination by Onslaught, who decides to combine with the other Combaticons on Vortex's suggestion to form Bruticus, who RC and Spider-Man fight together. When Makuta returns, he's surprised to find the Rebellion and knocks all the Autobots over. At his mercy, the Autobots remain captive. The Fallen, having decided to delay the use of the Harvester, informs Makuta that he finally plans to actually use it, but asks for Makuta to bring the Autobots and the other Decepticons so that they can witness their failure to stop him. The part ends with a short flashback from the Fallen, parodying Pinky and the Brain. Part 4. The Origin of Chaos Makuta brings the remaining Cybertronians to Egypt, the location of the Harvester, as they are about to witness the fall of Earth and the rise of the Decepticon Empire. Offshoot tries his best to fight back, but the Fallen impales him with his staff before Offshoot even has the chance. This encourages Hot Rod to punch the Fallen square in the face, take the Matrix from the Harvester, and become Rodimus Prime, which also revives Optimus Prime with accessories and activates the Harvester, allowing it to function without its placement. The Unleashed Power of the Matrix also has unexpected side effects on the Fallen. Since it was one of the original Primes, he has some resistance to its power, but being a multiversal servant to the Chaos Bringer Unicron, he is slowly weakening from its now-released power. While Optimus fights off Megatron, Starscream, and Bruticus all at once, the Fallen persists and fights Rodimus, putting up a decent fight, but his slowly weakening power eventually crippled him, rendering him vulnerable to near-fatal blows from the Prime, culminating in the beloved face removal. While this is going on, the Autobots fight back against their Decepticon captors again, but are halted when they notice the defeat of the Fallen. The Makuta is pleased with this, but also starts playing mind games with Rodimus Prime, who had the Matrix taken from him by Megatron, which, upon trying to use it, ends up switching dimensions with the R.I.D. Megatron. You know, the crazy one. After the mind games fail, Rodimus and Makuta fight each other head-on, with Makuta surviving. Optimus then decides to take him on, with Makuta eventually receding near-fatal injuries as well. With the power he gained from his brother, he repairs the Fallen, but also repairs his memory as well, as the Fallen remembers everything about his past life perfectly, including a means of conceiving a creature out of a being from an alternate dimension. The creature is created as the Fallen reveals his true name, Megatronus Prime. Part 5. The End of Climaxes It turns out that the Fallen just transformed Makuta into a monstrosity resembling Feral Chaos. Optimus chucks a grenade and causes the creature to explode into millions of pieces. The Fallen decides to use the remaining pieces as an armor set similar to Optimus's Jetwing upgrade, but it proves to be ineffectual, as Makuta and the Fallen, being of two different dimensions, are incompatible. As such, the armor does not protect him as well as he thought it would, leading to Optimus tearing the Fallen limb from limb, as well as destroying the Harvester after the Fallen is nothing but a pile of scrap. Now you cannot defeat me, for my face is not protected by this mask. Then give me your mask! Optimus comments on how disappointing that battle was, and asks the Autobots to just head back to base, while the remaining Decepticons figure out what to do. All except Shockwave, whose diabolical plans are built up in a way similar to the post-credits Avengers tease of Thanos. There was also a planned sequel, Transformers Revenge of the Revenging Revengers. As far as I think we've established, the Autobots would fight and kill Thundertron, Megatron, rebuilt as his Generation 2 self from Bludgeon to Chassis, and the remaining Decepticons form a new group called the Revengers, and Shockwave reveals his true intentions at the end. There is also another sequel called Are All Dead, which is essentially like sh a Shockwave vampire, but really that's about the most we wrote. Before I go though, there's one thing I would like to show you. I was planning on reworking Real Revenge even more, removing all crossover elements except for Spider-Man, and basically replacing Makuta with the Prime Decepticons, but having a triple war against each other. Like, there's one group of Decepticons, as in the Prime Decepticons, another group of Decepticons, as in the Decepticons with the Fallen and all that, and, of course, the Autobots, which would be a mix of the Movieverse, Generation 1, Prime, and all that good stuff, including a couple of Unicron children, you guys, if you squint. This is the trailer that I conceived out of that, as I planned on having a triple civil war until I decided to focus mostly on Prime. Here's the trailer that I made, and enjoy!
every last Autobot on this accursed world will pay. Conflicting agendas will only result in chaos and failure. Any battle. Engage any enemy. And defend our home. I've been lobbing with the fallen. One shall stand, and one shall fall. You, Optimus Prime!